Let's have a talk about page breaks. One of the great things about using modern day computers is that they are WYSIWYG, which stands for what you see is what you get. WYSIWYG. And what that means in context of a word processor is that you can see the edge of the page and see the text as it will appear when you print out the document. This is especially true if, and you'll remember previous videos we've looked at this, you have the print layout view selected. With that, when you scroll down your document, you can see the edge of the page. There's the edge of the page. You can see it's called a page break. And the computer does that automatically. When you're typing your text, when you get to the bottom of the page and to the edge of the margin, Word automatically creates a new page and starts the text at the top of that new page. If you adjust the margins, then that area would be adjusted also. So, that's pagination, where the page breaks appear, and Word takes care of that for you. But sometimes you need to be in charge, and that's what we're going to look at. If you remember a few videos ago, I talked about never pressing the space bar more than once between words, twice after punctuation, and never pressing the enter key more than once, because you can use the paragraph spacing to put spaces in for you. So if you have a look at my document, I'll switch on show hide. If we scroll from top to bottom, you'll see I've only ever pressed the enter key once, pressed it there. I've got paragraphs, but I haven't put paragraph spacing on. Just one enter key press at the end of each paragraph. And then you can see we've got a new subsection here all about dogs. But again, just one enter key press, one enter key press. That's fine. And it works out that the paragraph all about dogs has come at the bottom of this page. What I want to do is make dogs start at the top of this page. Two ways to do this, the right way and the wrong way. And I'm going to show you the wrong way first. I'll switch off show hide. This is how many people would do this, and it's the wrong way. They think, ha, dogs, I want that to start on the next page. So if I just press the enter key a few times, there we are, it's at the top of the new page. Brilliant. So I've got all about foxes on that page, all about dogs on this page. Isn't life good? No, it isn't. It might look okay until you start making changes. Let's, for example, if I select the whole document and change the font size to 10. Now, no, we'll make it even smaller. We'll make it 8. What you'll see there, if I scroll up, is that the dog's paragraph now starts here, which is still on the first page. So there's all about foxes. There's all about dogs. With just a big gap there. It's not at the top of the next page at all. And it's got a big gap because of all these enter key presses, which of course we didn't want. I need to press the enter key, if I was to do it incorrectly, lots of times to get the word dogs at the top of the next page. Just keep doing this until we've got to the bottom of the next, top of the next page, nearly there. And there we can see dogs is at the top of that page again. When we switch off show hide, what's the problem? We've got foxes on the first page, dogs on the second page. Looks fine. And on paper it will, but you can see the problem. If I now decide to change the font style again, let's make it uh, back up to 10, then now we've jumped down. Just Every time you make a change, you've got to go back and adjust that gap so that it just fits the pages. So clearly that's not a good way to do it. I'm going to delete those enter key presses. 
I'm going to show you the correct way now. So that's the incorrect way. And just remember, never press the Enter key more than once. Use the facilities of the word processor to do it for you. And that's either in paragraph spacing or, in this instance, page breaks. And that's what we're going to use here. I want the word dogs to appear at the top of the next page. It doesn't matter what kind of formatting I'm going to have. I want the word dogs always to appear at the top of the page following this sentence. So what we do is put the cursor insertion point right in front of the D of dogs. Because it's the D of dogs that I want to be at the top of the next page. So I've got my flashing insertion point there. And I simply do insert, break. It asks us in this dialog box which type of break. You don't need to worry about this. The default is page break. Leave it at that. If you want to know what the rest mean, you need to go to the advanced videos. So the default is what we want, a page break. We then click OK. And dogs has been jumped to the bot to the top of the next available page. If I switch on show hide, you'll see there are not lots of enter key presses. What there is, is this new symbol called page break. The beauty of doing this is that I can now make changes to the font style and size. Let's make it bigger. And wherever the last sentence is, at the top of the very next page, will be dogs. That's because we've inserted a page break. Doesn't matter what changes we make, the word dogs will always be at the top of that next page. This page break is just a hidden character like paragraph marks and spaces, and we can delete it. You can click next to the line and use either delete or backspace to get rid of it. And that brings things back together. So wherever you want to force a page break, don't press the Enter key. Put the cursor insertion point where you want it to go and select Insert, Break, and OK. That inserts the page break. Your pagination is sorted.